In module six, we are going to cover the obligations imposed upon significant data fiduciaries. Who are these people? What are the obligations in, imposed upon them and these kind of organizations, along with uh, cross-border data transfer and the obligations for the same. The central government via notification will include a certain class of data fiduciaries as significant data fiduciaries. Now it's pertinent to understand that what are the uh, what are the grounds on which uh, the central government will notify certain data fiduciaries to be significant data fiduciaries. It will be based on the volume of data being processed or collected by them, the sensitivity of the data, the nature of data, the kind of harm such data breach can cause. A lot of these factors will be considered in determining if an organization will be in the list of the significant data signif uh, uh, fiduciaries. Now, what's the difference between a data fiduciary and a significant data fiduciary? Apart from this government notification, there are certain additional obligations imposed upon a significant data fiduciary. Uh, the first of them being uh, that uh, a data protection officer has to be mandatorily appointed. Apart from that, a consent manager, a data uh, uh, a protection officer, and the data protection officer has to be based in India. So it cannot happen that the data fiduciary says that, you know, my registered office is in so-and-so country, so that's why I'm not amenable to the law of India or that I will not have any person answerable in India. He has to have a data protection officer in India who's answerable to uh, the data protection board of India. Uh, this uh, data protection officer has to be a one-point contact for all uh, grievances of data principles and also issues or questions raised uh, by the data protection uh, uh, board of India. Uh, the next important thing is periodic data audits have to be performed. So data audits of the compliance of this particular law has to be mandatorily performed by uh, uh, in cases of organizations with significant data fiduciaries. Uh, apart from this, they need to maintain reasonable securities, the practices which is, which is with respect to cyber security and data security. And uh, additionally, along with this, there is an obligation of data protection impact assessment, which is uh, posed upon them wherein they need to periodically conduct data protection impact assessments also. Now with this basically in a nutshell, I'm, I hope you all have understood uh, the obligations, the legal obligations imposed upon uh, data fiduciaries in India, irrespective of whether they are providing services from outside India, as long as they are providing services into India or goods into India, they are going to be covered under the Indian legal regime. And if uh, they're dealing with sensitive data, they are dealing with a large volume of Indian data, in that situation, they will be considered as significant data fiduciaries in India. Now, with this, we come to the very uh, uh, controversial topic of cross-border data transfer, which was being highly debated even prior to the passing of this Act. Uh, so, cross-border data transfer over here is also regulated by this Act, wherein the central government has the power by notification to um, disallow the transfer of certain categories of data outside India. So, by regulation, by rules framed under this Act, they can actually uh, demarcate uh, data that can be processed outside India and data that cannot leave uh, Indian boundaries. Uh, the second most important aspect of cross-border data transfer, which I clearly mentioned to you even prior, wherein a significant data fiduciary is located outside India and providing services into India. He needs to comply with this Indian law. He cannot really state that, you know, I am uh, amenable only to the law of the land where I'm incorporated. If he's providing services into India, he needs to comply with this law, have a data protection officer located in India. With this, we come to an end of this module. And in the next module, we'll be seeing uh, uh, the authorities under the Act.